Fun Facts presents the 1955 Bentley S1 Continental. It is a 50s classic car. It was introduced back in 1955 and had a production run through 1959. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. And let's get started now. The Bentley S1, originally simply the Bentley S, was a luxury produced car by Bentley Motors Limited from 1955 through 1959. The S1 was derived from Rolls-Royce complete redesign of its standard production car after World War II, the Silver Cloud. Each was its maker's last standard production car with an independent chassis. The S Series Bentley was given the Rolls-Royce Bentley L Series V8 engine in late 1959 and named the S2. Twin headlamps and a facelift to the front arrived in late 1962, resulting in the S3. In late 1965, the, the S3 was replaced by the new unitary construction Rolls-Royce Silver Shadow derived T-Series. It was announced at the end of April of 1955, and it was noted that the existing Continental model would continue. The new standard steel replaced the R-type standard steel, which had been in production with modifications since 1946. It was a more generously sized five or six seater with the body manufactured in pressed steel with stress skin construction. Doors, bonnet, and luggage locker lid <clears throat> were of aluminum, having a total new external appearance, although with the traditional radiator grill, the main differences from the R-Type were 3 inches longer wheelbase, lower build without reducing headroom, and with an enlarged luggage boot, which is the trunk, softer suspension with electrically operated control of rear dampers, lighter steering and improved braking, Engine capacity increased to 4887 cc's, the same size as used in the Bentley Continental, and there was a four-speed automatic gearbox <clears throat> that was standard, with the ability to select individual ratios if desired. As with the preceding Mark IV, Mark VI, the R-Type Bentleys, there was almost no difference between the standard Bentley and the Rolls-Royce models. This Bentley S, differing only in its radiator grille, shape, and badging from the Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud 1. The models shared the 4.9 liter straight six engine. They were the last vehicles to be powered by descendants of the engine originally used in the Rolls-Royce 20 from 1922 to 1929, the bore was 95.25 millimeters, the stroke was 114.3 millimeters, and the compression ratio was 6.6 .6 to 1. Twin SU carburetors were fitted with upgraded models from 1957. A four-speed automatic transmission was standard. Two wheelbases were produced, 123 inches, and from 1957, 127 inches. A standard wheelbase car tested by the British magazine, The Motor, in 1957 had a top speed of 103 miles per hour and could achieve acceleration from zero to 60 in 13.1 seconds and fuel consumption of 16.1 miles per imperial gallon was recorded. The test car, which had optional power steering, cost 6,305 uh, euros, including taxes of 1,803.
a high performance version S Continental chassis only was introduced six months after the introduction of the S1. Lighter weight, fixed head, and drop head coupe bodies were provided to special order for premium of about 50% by the H.J. Mulliner and Company, Park Ward, James Young, and Freestone and Webb. A pre-production two-seater fixed head coupe on a new chassis was designed and built for Bentley for the Bentley factory by Pin In Farina. In 1959, motoring correspondent Archie Vicar described it as comfortable, large, with a decent turn of speed. <clears throat> Replacing the R Type Bentley launched the S1 as the predominant luxury car. Among these, were the Continental, which was meant for custom coach-built bodies in the same theme as the R-Type Continental, to underline the sporting potential. Bentley fitted a shorter radiator, a higher transmission ratio, and an optional manual transmission. These were some of the most expensive cars produced in that period. When launched, the S-Series Bentley was almost identical to the Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud 1, except for the front radiator treatment. Both models used the same 4.9 liter inline 6, which could power the car up to 120 miles per hour. The chassis was built from box section sheet metal and could support a variety of different bodies. In October of 1955, the Continental chassis became available for custom coach work. In total, 431 S1 Continentals were manufactured and the bulk of the bodies were built by H.J. Molner as a fastback sports saloon. After being purchased by Rolls-Royce, Bentley started to offer badge-engineered vehicles from its owner, and so was the situation with the S1 Continental, which was a Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud in disguise. After launching the S1 Continental in a four-door version, the crew-based brand introduced a two-door version named Drop Head Coupe. It was clear that the Bentley brand was focused on the driver's pleasure in handling the car and not on being driven in it. It was time when car makers started to lose the formerly used fenders and create the so-called ponton-shaped vehicles where the side panels formed a continuous area. Yet at the front, the designers didn't know exactly how to deal with the headlights and placed them between the engine compartment and the inner sides of the fenders in a separate lower mounted cluster. The grille was still massive and instead of Rolls-Royce statue, there was a flying V badge. On the car sides, the long doors made the ingress and egress easier for four occupants. The curved slope trunk lid followed an arched line toward the chrome bumper at the back. Inside, at the front, there was a pair of bucket seats separated by a center armrest. The dash panel covered in wood featured a center mounted radio. In front of the driver, Bentley installed the speedometer and tachometer placed in front of the three spoke steering wheel. At the same time, in front of the passenger was the glove compartment and an analog clock. Finally, in the back, 
the car maker placed a leather wrapped bench with folding armrest in the middle. Under the hood, the car maker used the same 4.9 liter inline six power plant that was carried over from Rolls Royce. In addition, the four speed GM Hydromatic gearbox was available starting in 1956. Okay, well if you found yourself this far into the video, we'd certainly like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch our video. And if you like our video, please give us a thumbs up. It really does help our channel. And if you like our channel, please subscribe because we'll be doing all the cars from the 50s, the 60s. We'll be doing supercars and hybrid cars. We'll be doing autoramas and car shows and hot rods. A little bit of everything for everybody. And we hope to see you when we upload our next video. And always, always, always take good care.